not all the time in the classroom. Students observe our actions and use those as the basis for their own actions. For example, we might model how to listen or how to behave appropriately in a setting such as a classroom. When it comes to teaching and learning, modelling means something slightly more specific. It's when we demonstrate or show students how to do something new or how to understand something new. So we often use modelling when we're introducing things for the first time. This is when students have very little prior knowledge on which they can call to make sense of the learning. So for example, a PE teacher might be showing students in a football lesson how to play a particular kind of pass that they've not really done previously. So they would model that for them, very clearly demonstrating what it is the students need to do to be successful. Or in a maths lesson, the teacher might be introducing simultaneous equations. So they model a whole series of simultaneous equations on the board for the whole class, showing students how to solve these. Now, modelling is a really powerful tool because it provides students with a very clear sense of what they need to do to be successful or what they need to do in order to move their learning on. So they can copy borrow from or imitate the models we provide and whilst at first sound this might suggest that it's not particularly onerous for the student in terms of learning remember that modeling is most key when the students have little prior knowledge so actually copying imitating or borrowing is kind of the first steps that the students need to take over time we'll expect them to make the model their own they'll internalize it and won't need to observe us or listen to us in the future. And in fact, they'll put their own twist on things. They'll modify it, adapt it, so it suits them. Now, modelling takes its theoretical lead from the work of Albert Bandura in the 1960s and 1970s. He was a psychologist who proposed the idea of social learning theory. Now, put simply, this suggests that children learn by observing and listening to models in their environment. Bandura proposed three types of modelling, live models, verbal instruction and symbolic modelling. So a live model is when we are demonstrating to the students what we want them to do. Maybe we're at the front of the class taking them through exactly what we want them to copy themselves. Verbal instruction is when we talk through the model and it might be that we actually combine those two together. And symbolic instruction is when it's through the media. So a child may observe a model on a television program or they may hear a model listening to the radio. And the symbolism there is because it's mediated through some form of transmission. In conclusion, modelling is a really powerful tool. It allows students to see exactly what they need to do to be successful. They can copy from the model, they can borrow from it or they can imitate it. And over time, they'll make it their own. When we're in the classroom, we'll tend to use verbal instruction or live modelling or a combination of the two. Golden Nugget. Modelling is an incredibly powerful tool because it allows students to see or understand what it is they need to do.